In this video, we're going to focus on how to read CSV files in JavaScript. And this is very useful if you have, for example, Excel files that you can save as a CSV file. So you can read uh, files in Chart.js or getting the, the CSV files put it into Chart.js so you can have your tool. So how to do this? Well, we're going to use a JavaScript library and this JavaScript library is called Papa Parse. And with this JavaScript library, which is a quite useful one, you can read and basically convert CSV files for, or they will convert it into JSON files. So JavaScript is able to read that because JavaScript cannot read CSV files by default. So they need to be parsed and parsed means basically converting them into a readable format for a different language. In this case, it is for JavaScript. And so this is quite nice. So basically what it does by default is it converts any file that you have into a JSON file as long as it is a CSV file. So if you have an Excel file, it will be converted. All right, let's start and explore how to do this. So what we're going to do here is the following. I have here this basic CSV file here. So all these details, it's saved in a Excel file but as uh, the the extension name is .csv so that's a requirement it cannot be an excel file by default so what we're going to do is first of all we want to install this or add this one and i have here the cdn so what you can do is just go to js deliver you can find here the cdn this is the latest version here papaparse.min.js which is 5.3 i'm going to click here and then select this one here copy html version so then, once we have this, we can paste this in somewhere, it doesn't matter. And then what we're going to do is, here we're going to do two things. So what I want to do is, I want to put in here a button that the moment we upload a file, it will be readable. So how can we do this? Well, let's start with the basics. First of all, we're going to put in the input type, and this type is called file, so that it can be selected and we can select a item here. We're going to give an ID name, and this ID name will be um, upload file. That's probably the most appropriate one. And then we say here, what is a file extension uh, that's available or allowed? And that will be eventually for us accept. So basically, that's the accept attribute equals dot csv. So meaning that only these files are allowed to be read. So once we have this, another thing what I want to do here is add up a button. We're going to put in a button, and in this button we will just say, uh, we will say upload. Basically this is the upload confirm, confirm basically, confirm, to so upload confirm. And you could say you also upload file, doesn't matter so much, just don't get confused with this. So that's why I'm trying to give it a bit different name. But you could say here upload file as well. But eventually our id will be here upload confirm so we have the file that we select and then we confirm the upload of that specific file that's probably the best way to see it then we go back here and refresh all right so once we have this we select the file and we have here this we'll select this option here and confirm so once you have that we click here upload and of course nothing happens the reason why nothing happens here is we we didn't indicate anything else more. So what we need to do now is start to work with our JavaScript in here. So we say here, our JavaScript, put it in here. And then what we're going to do is the following. We're going to create, first of all, we want to make sure that this is a at event list and that the moment we click on it, it will understand that it needs to upload something. So we say here the following, constant. And let's grab this one as our constant name. Why? Because this will be eventually the one that will trigger the upload of the file here. So we need to confirm the upload. Let me say here, a document dot get element by ID. And then here, what is the ID name? Well, I prefer to use the same name as the constant, so it's easy to track. And there we are. So once we have this, we need to say here next. We get that, and then we say here dot at event listener we're going to trigger an event the moment we have that and then what we're going to do is the following how are we going to trigger it well we say click we're going to click it and once we click on it 
we want to do the following we want to trigger the following function so we're going to give this an array function so sorry an arrow function pinpointing the specific function that we want and in here we're going to start working with that function so here what we're going to do is because we've already now uploaded this we can now use the pop up parse command here to just parse the csv file into the json so that's what we're going to do is we say here pop up parse with capital p and then we say here pop up parse all right what are we going to parse so what we're going to parse is basically the file that we have uploaded it needs to be recognized and then once we did that, then we can start working on it. So we say here, we grab this one here, oh, upload file, and then we say here, document dot get element by ID file. Meaning we're going to parse a specific item with the pop up parse command. And what are we going to parse? Well, this ID specifically here that we uploaded. This is basically the link itself. And then we say here dot files the reason why we say dot files is we only have one file if you have multiple upload option where you can select multiple files then you can use here one two etc etc but this is an array and we only have one single file because we only have one button here to select so we want to do that one so once we did this we selected that here we put in a comma and then we put in again curly braces and between here we're going to work with certain commands here and the first one will be the download and then download will indicate as true and the reason why we say download true is because basically what we're going to do is we're going to upload the file here it will download it although it's already on our desktop in this case but you could do it uh, you could upload it from anywhere basically or you select a file because what we're going to do is we work it based on my ex ex uh, existing file here so we have this one we say true then we have here we can say header and i'll put the header on true and this is a very useful one because if you want to pinpoint the header specifically use header true if you have like in the header a title for example the first value here let me show you is the id so you want to use these headers here eventually to pinpoint these here so this revenue will be connected with this. If you don't do it, then this will be all considered as one, oh, sorry, as a single column, and this is just a part of the column here. So it assumes that this is a value as well, besides the ID, or besides the ID number here. But what you really want is the ID is basically the indicator of this entire column. So this is why we say here, do we have a header, yes or no? We have a header, if you don't have a header, Maybe here an ID would be just zero, just no header at all, just a value. In that case, you say header false. And later on, I will show you as well. So once we have this, we can do another one as well, which would be the skip empty and then lines. If ever there would be any empty lines or blank lines or blank cells, it will be skipped as well. Very useful. And you will see later on that sometimes by default, it just grabs the last line. Afterward, after this, you can see here is a blank line here. It sees this. So if you delete this, then it's okay. But if sometimes, because this file has basically been downloaded from here, so I get to my local host here, and then here I just click on export. When I click on export, I selected here the CSV file, click on that, and download. You can even do this one here for Microsoft Excel, doesn't matter. And then you will get this. But what happened was when I did this, eventually there was still here an enter and this enter or this blank line is now being removed it sees any empty lines yes all right if it sees them should we remove them yes or skip them that's it so this can be very useful all right so once we have this we can now continue on the completion of it so we get complete and what we're going to do here is we're going to create a function and this function does the following we say here results and in this function results we just want only one thing we want to have the results being displayed in our console log for now there's a console log and then we say results semicolon let's put in here semicolon and here as well semicolon and save this so if i save this now and i'm going to refresh this i'm going to select here again and what will happen is the following we select the bar chart okay confirm and we say upload so now nothing happens but if you open up the developer tab you can see we get the objects here and what we get is 
you can see the array and you can see here, everything has been matched here in a JSON and it understands that the ID equals one and ID equals two here. It sees all of this. Very, very important. You can see all of these matching items here exactly as what we had in here. So this was basically that, but then eventually it converted everything in the correct way, which is very, very useful. However, you might say, all right, so, so what about well, what I said here, I skip empty line. Let's make it in here false. If I do this false, let's see what happens here. Because pay attention now, we have here now the length of 10 from array zero till nine. So if I refresh here now, we have nothing. Choose again, and now I'm going to choose here this, and then we select here again upload the file and looks what happens now. Now we get 11 data points or an array with length of 11 and what happens here is the last one is basically the incorrect one what I indicated before with this here. So what would happen if I would just put in here some more and this and I save this let's see if this would impact it as well. Refresh get that go here and all right Press upload. So now we have this again. You can see now we have an array of 13, of a length of 13, with number 4 is empty, and number 8 is empty, and number 12 is empty. So as you can see, the skip empty lines will protect our issue here. So we say this on true again. And what is with the header? So if you see in the structure, right now this structure is beautifully done with the data here, and then you have to pinpoint the ID here. And revenue here etc etc so once we say this is false we, we want to have the header you will see that this structure is being completely adjusted refresh here open up and get this file here and upload this file you can see now what's happening open up the developer the developer tab make sure you open up here the arrays and now you can see our arrays are just considered as 11 different arrays the top here is considered an array as well and but it's not anymore cross connected with each other which is not beneficial here what you could do of course here is to loop it through the very values here that would be possible and you skip the first line however it's not really practical so having this header here is a extremely useful one so we put them through here So what we can do now is, for example, well, let's break this down or let's put this back to the original state where we have the header is true. And then if I save this again, let's refresh this and do this again. Grab this here. And press up, upload. All right. So we have this here now. And let's try to grab some of these specific values here. So we have the ID here, but I do not want to touch the ID. What I do like to have is the revenue values here these are interesting so what i'm going to do here the first one is for example this so how do we get this so basically we're working now with json this would mean that we can just quickly grab it but what we need to do is we have to make sure that we are working within this structure here with the results so we say here pay attention here because you see here this is data and the data goes down as you can see here it breaks down into four arrays or basically four uh, uh, elements in the arrays. So what we want is the revenue. So we can pinpoint from data, but data is equal to zero, and then revenue, which would be 12. All right. So how do we do this? Well, just here we can do it again here. Console.log. Then here I'll say here results. That's the number one because this is the the core, which is this part here. And then we say here dot. So where are we going in? We're going now into the data, and specifically data zero. So we say here, data zero. So this is an index of an array. And then here, dot, what exactly do we want? Revenue. So once we have this semicolon here, if I save this now, I'm going to refresh the page. And what I could do maybe here is I'm just going to comment this out. Oh, save this. Refresh the page. Select the option here. Grab this. Here we are. And upload. Once I upload, you can see now we get 12, which is correct because 12 on revenue is this part here. So let's try and get the entire row here. So how will we do this? Well, all we need to do is we need to understand how to create arrays. And I highly recommend you to check my array series in Chart.js because eventually if you understand this with this, you can start to combine it all together. So let's, but, uh, let's make one here. So first of all, I'm going to do four. I'm going to make a for loop, 
and then we say i for iteration equals zero iteration means repeating yourself that's why it's a loop a loop is basically something that repeats itself and then here we say i will be looped consistently as long as results dot data dot length is larger or basically as long as the i is smaller than what we have here Remember, we only had here probably, if I look here back, you can see here, it will not count this row here. So it will count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there's only 10 data points, it makes sense. So only 10 data points. So we'll look through this and then we say here i for incre increasing it incrementally. And then here, all we do is the following we're going to grab this here. Going to grab put this in here we say here will be i and then we say here before we even do something we'll create a constant with an array so let's say this is the revenue line or revenue you um, data revenue data equals an array which is blank all right so what are we going to do we're going to push this and we say it's a data so revenue data dot push and then we have this here, semicolon. And once we did this, all I want to do is after the end of this nice loop here that we have, what we're going to do here is basically the following. We say here console.log and show me the revenue, which is this, or revenue data, which is this constant here. Show me this. And I'm going to hide this one here. This one we don't need. Save this. Refresh, select the file, and once we select this here, upload, and there you are. We get now all the data here, which is the length of 10. We just correct, and this is everything related to our specific value of revenue. We can double check this. Let's check the ending 25, 30, and 20. So 20, 30, and 25. That will be the original ending. 20. 30 and 25 which is correct and matching exactly with our things so of course we could do the same with the others to do that all we have to do is exactly the same structure here so i'm going to grab this put this in here instead of revenue i'm going to say here this will be the cost and this will be the profit and the reason why i'm going to keep these names is check here we have these this will be related to profit and this one is related to cost so what we're going to do here is basically the same structure. We're going to do loop through this, but then instead of looping it only with this one, we're going to push two more. We're going to push the cost data, and we're going to get the cost item. And we have the same as the profit, and we're going to get here the profit. So remember, this is very important because our structure is built in such a way, if you would have here another item, it will not be able to do unless you're going to change the name for example this would be no revenue but this could be maybe product a you need to uh it's a product one you need to use whatever you use here so this is very important so it must be matching with the naming conventions of your table if not it will not work so we have this let's copy this and all I want to do now is I want to set here cost, profit. Let me save this now and I refresh. All right. Add up the new bar chart values. Upload. There we are. And if you pay attention now, you can see here we get three different values here, which is all correct. Let's double check the first three digits of the second and the third. So it's 665 and 633. All right. So that would be. The cost which would be first and then the profit all right so we can see here cost is the last one which is 665 that's correct and the profit was this the second it's basically the third line here which is 633 and that's 633 all right so this is exactly matching now with this you can start to really go deep now we'll make another video specifically covering that Thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoy it. And if you enjoy this video, you probably will enjoy this one as well. And if you're interested in Chart.js, check out in the description box the link directing to my Chart.js course where you can learn everything about Chart.js. And finally, of course, 
make sure you subscribe to my channel.